Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things LEGO. Hit the link below to find a store near you. My name is Ben Rollman. I'm the LEGO, Land, LEGO ambassador for uh, TechSlug here in Austin. This is our project support project for this year. It's a Mars base um, that I designed the modular part of it and everybody kind of bought into the project getting like a modular or some tubes, uh, breezeways, um, landing areas, stuff like that, and then improved upon it on their own. Some people brought a lot of creativity to it with like this giant Martian monolith. Um, and uh, we have a couple people doing their own domes and lighting them up and just being as um, creative and whimsical and awesome and trying to keep it connected as possible. Absolutely. There's so much to take in here. You mentioned this monolith, so we can start there. Just like a ton of gold pieces yeah. <laughs> inside this thing. But what else can you tell us about kind of the design of this? So this is done by uh, James Browder, and he has a lot of these gold pieces because they were on sale at pick a brick a few years ago, and he just amassed them. And so this was uh, basically like a culmination of his vision of a nice use of these pieces. Um, he was re really proud of the fact that you could kind of see through it and uh, get kind of like the inner workings kind of mm -hmm. falling away from it and stuff. Um, it, we. The more it got put together, the more we realized this needs to be like a cornerstone or a, you know, kind of a focal piece for the entire uh, setup. And then next to that is this huge dome section with kind of its own almost enclosed city. So what all is happening here? So this is uh, Brian Costello's dome. And he actually had started this uh, before we started our project support project. So he asked if he could incorporate this and it just became such a natural thing to fit in. We could run the tubes into the middle of it. He just kind of adapted it and then lit it up. He's very good with lighting. He's got a lot of micro scale stuff that's lit up like this. Uh, it just works so well. It looks uh, like the, the base is under construction. Um, people are actively living here and developing. So it's, it's a wonderful addition. And what can you tell us about kind of the design of that dome itself? What are some of the pieces used there to get that shape? So that's, uh, it's a pretty simple, uh, it's not a lot of bricks in there. I didn't personally design it, but I know he's got a just basically bar and clip thing going on. Um, and it's just a geometric, the math works out that way. Um, if you can get hexagonal shapes to kind of interlock, the more you get, the stronger it gets. And as long as they're not falling apart at the clips and bars, it's gonna hold together. It's really well done. Shout out to this fantastic trophy. So uh, there's some really cool, well-designed trophies and well-deserved win there as well. Yeah, ab absolutely. <laughs> like, I know these two, the, the monolith and the dome were both registered sort of independent, but we wanted to add them to it. So again, it's, it's a wonderful win for him. And as we make our way around uh, to the other side here, we start to come to kind of more uh, human structures, but also this kind of really nicely landscaped section. So what all do we have in this corner? Um, this corner was brought to us by the DFW Lug. Um, this is a Rogue Bricks group with uh, Ryan McBride's uh, folks building this entire section out. Um, it came together wonderfully. Um, a lot of the, uh, the kind of internal structures, seeing how they're tunneling into the mountainsides and being able to kind of like store cargo and their ships and grow a little more. Um, my favorite part, if it's still over here, is these astronauts. You've got two astronauts that are doing just kind of normal spacewalking, and this guy is just absolutely shooting himself off to space, and he gives no cares, <laughs> and it just makes me giggle every time I see it. But this was such a great addition, and it's a wonderful, another great anchor for the whole project. And you mentioned uh, kind of the, the standard that you created here, so we can get an up-close look at the, the living structures. What were some of the key elements there that people kind of build off of as this came together? So the, we were kind of limited because it's project support, so we were limited to how many pieces we could buy, how many unique parts we could get. So that kind of limited what we could do with the habitat itself. But what I wanted to do is base this off uh, an old moon base standard that was done to allow people to, if, even if they didn't get the kit while we were ordering it, they could build their own and kind of connect it, given that it fit a certain you know, number of parameters that could tie into the airlocks and they could bring whatever they wanted and it would just tie all together. And then here we've got some more vegetation sort of greenhouse type ideas in this section. Yeah, so that's, I think that's Brian Lasseter. He did a lot of great work of kind of sinking it in. Uh, we built this on mills plating so it could be a little more stable and we, if we wanted to, we could run some lighting or something through it. But he was able to reuse kind of the level of it and sink it in and make it look like they're actually gardening and whatnot. And there's another great use on the other side of like a crash ship that kind of burrowed its way into the ground. So we'll keep making our way around then. And as we come to this section over here, you start to see some of the kind of uh, spaceships, so some of the spacecraft represented. So tell us about kind of the middle section here. 
So the middle section, I feel, is uh, a lot of whimsy. Um, we've got uh, some stuff that I know a lot of people have just had on their own and brought because they've had it for a while and it just worked really well, kind of the classic space look. And we've got some alien architecture, I think, in the middle. <laughs> Not really sure what that is, but it looks fantastic and I think it catches the eye really well. Um, the middle piece is also, it, it's kind of an under construction piece because it was going to be like a large array. Um, it ran out of time getting that done, but I th you know it's ambitious and I think it works pretty well given the whole under construction look going on. Mm -hmm. And what is this? It looks like a food hall on Mars. Yeah, so this is a flea market, a farmer's market something. This is a, a Frankie and Don Wright, and they uh, they came together really well. We've seen bits of this over the year, uh, over the last couple months at our lug meetings, and this kind of shocked us all when it came together like this. It was really an eye-catching piece. But yeah, it's a great use of minifigs. It's a great use of like internalizing some, you know, we'll bring some of Earth to Mars here, and who, what's more Earth than a farmer's market, you know? <laughs> And of course, you can't have a big space layout without some kind of a battle happening. So right. in this corner, some really well-designed sort of like mechs and various soldiers. Yeah. So this is, again, the folks who did the flea market. This is their son who did all this part of it with some help, I think. Um, great use of like the CMF, the space CMF heads, the kind of crab alien heads um, to create sort of a, a, you know, the space marines against the alien invaders. And I think it's a great kind of counterpoint to the alien obelisk on the other side, which is a different so sort of alien. So, you know, maybe there's more life on Mars than we thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I really loved kind of taking a closer look at some of the intricate details here. Uh, there's a lot to appreciate there and just kind of the arms and the posing of those. Yeah, it's a lot of fun when you can get uh, a lot of action with the, the micro fighters and the mm -hmm. mechs kind of backing them up um, and have people floating off with those angled pieces, give it a little flame and explosions and stuff. It's a lot of fun. Here we have, looks like something maybe crashed into, into the ground right here. Yeah, so this, I, I forget what the name of this is. It's um, it's a uh, one of our lug members and uh, her mom had kind of put this one together and she named it something that was her name as it you know they referred to her in the family kind of thing and it's her crash landing on Mars <laughs> but again it's got kind of that divot out of the mills plating and it's really nicely built up uh, to make it look like a nice impact crater I think it turned out really well a little bit of a Nexo Knights reference almost it looks like next to that <laughs> yeah that's the the ITS shuttle uh, from Galaxy's Edge right and uh, they slapped some ice planet stuff on the top of it, and it's a, it looks awesome. I, I kind of made fun of it, but I'm like, I really like that set, and I like ice planet, so it works well. And then we've got a little frenzified uh, sort of walker in the back with a big drill on the bottom. Yeah, anytime somebody shows up with like friends stuff that's <laughs> themed like that, and I'm like, just throw it in there, it's gonna be amazing. Um, the friends line, the whole like Lego line of space that happened, we started planning this last year. And then uh, sometime er late last year, early this year, Lego went, everything space all the time. <laughs> Across all themes, we're gonna do space. So we're like, this is gonna work so well with our planned project. <laughs> so having some friend stuff in here, having different you know, Star Wars references, classic space, uh, Marines, there's gonna be another Star Wars thing over here. It's, they're all fantastic, I really like it. We move into a lot more of the habitats now as well. Is there sort of a limit to how high you can stack these? Or are they pretty modular and strong that you can just kind of keep going and going with it? I'd like to think as the person who designed it that it could go as high as we wanted to, but I know from putting these together, um, again, limited number of pieces we could use and not really understanding some of the truss uh, pillars, don't have a real good grip strength, mm -hmm. the size of the plates on the mills plate, they kept popping off a little bit, so we had to make some adjustments to get it to be able to be more stable, but once you get all the um, the supports underneath it, you could, you could go, like the middle tower is mine, so that's about as high as I was comfortable going um, before it was like I couldn't transport it anymore. It's like I have, I have no way to get this to the place. I need to stop before it gets too big. But yeah, I'd like to see this go a lot bigger if we could do it. What is the story of what's happening with the middle tower? The middle tower is supposed to be at first a rotating restaurant, but I, I'm not really great with motors and gearing. So I'm like, how about just some uh, grow platforms at the top? We'll just do that. Um, and the theme of Brick Rodeo is to build up. So the idea was we're trying to build things tall. Um, uh, builders tend to have a flat perspective on like uh, landscaping and stuff. So we're trying to break out of that and build a little higher. And the, you know, the obelisk in the back, the tower, a lot of these habitat things. And then stuff in the general exhibit hall, we're trying to build up a little bit more. So that was the whole impetus behind that. 
I love this little site here, digging up maybe some sort of prehistoric creatures on Mars. This is great because this came in late. This was this is like two days of people showing up with a lot of these, and I hadn't seen this one till like this morning, and it's fantastic. It's like, well, I guess dinosaurs may have come from here. We don't really know. There's two rib cages. I don't know what's going on over here. But yeah, the whimsy, the creativity, uh, digging into the mills plating, using a lot of the uh, landscaping brick, it's really awesome. And I think that's a beekeeper. It looks like a beekeeper, not even really an astronaut. I don't know. We have a nice splash of color in this section. It looks like they've maybe found some kind of like underground reservoir down in the ground here. Sure, and I think that may be Will Heron. Um, he got, we did a draft a few months ago and he got a lot of those little alien blurgs, glarms, whatever the alien's name is from uh, Dreams. The Z-Blob? Z-Blob, yeah. And uh, so in the draft, he just kept getting those. We're like, what are you gonna do with those? He's like, none of your business. And then it shows up on Mars. We're like, oh, perfect. So it worked out really well. Um, he's always good at doing whimsy and small building stuff that's very cute and approachable and colorful, so it turned out really great. Mm -hmm. And then we've got some fun references in this corner, so what's happening over here? Um, I think this is a cantina from Star Wars, or so it says on the top there. Um, it reminds me of um, uh, Cobb Vanth's uh, um, cantina kind of bar on um, The Mandalorian, or no, Book of Boba Fett. Uh, gives it that sort of, it's out in the middle of nowhere, outpost, mm -hmm. cantina. Um, it breaks a little bit with the rest of the theme, but I think, you know, as long as people are happy drinking here, it's <laughs> it's going to be great. And then we come to another smaller dome. It looks like there's maybe a bit of a, a battle fight happening inside there. Yeah, so this is, uh, I think this is Stephen Watkins, and he does a lot of the gaming here at the convention, so a lot of these pieces I think can go into the, like um, some battle mech type games that he runs and so he's able to kind of incorporate them into I guess like a Thunderdome you know two mechs enter one mech leaves kind of thing um, it's, they're great sizes it works well with the dome you could spill out into the rest of the setup it looks awesome one thing I really love in this section is the way that this builder has incorporated the landscaping with the habitats mm -hmm. and it just makes it feel kind of very natural and very lifelike. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good um, design that he did. Um, I was hoping that we would kind of do more of that with the tubing going through. Uh, I know a, a lot of us had tried to incorporate like mining involved somehow and like incorporating a lot of the, the landscaping brick, uh, but that was a fantastic uh, look that he got going there. So what was the total number of builders involved in the whole thing? Do you know that? Uh, honestly, I don't have any idea. I know how many people contributed to like buying from uh, project support, and it was 25, 26 okay. something. And then we had a few other people who didn't really get the kits, brought their own stuff. Um, the uh, Dallas people had a lot of, I think they had three or four people maybe more helping with that. We had a lot of people just kind of show up with their own plates of stuff that added to the project. Um, we kind of had to cap it at a certain size because we're running out of space. Um, and it looks good as a square, square versus like a square plus two plates. So, um, yeah, I'm thinking maybe 30, 32 people, I think total, probably yeah. brought to this, which is great. No, that's amazing. Do you know how many parts are in the habitats there that everyone ordered to create those? I should because I designed it in studio. <laughs> I should have a memory of what, but I don't. Um, I think the habitats themselves are probably about... 400 pieces um, but again it's very simplified because we had a, a piece limit um, so there was a lot of corners that were cut the roofs were really hard to put on because there's not a lot of support inside and we also kind of wanted to leave them a little empty in case people wanted to uh, put more stuff inside yeah. it like uh, places to sleep computers stuff like that so I don't have an exact piece count but let's just say like half a million <laughs> overall you know that works yeah are there are there future plans to continue with this this idea and this collaborative maybe at future brick rodeo shows or where do you where do you think this goes from here I'm not really sure the only exhibit that I had uh, put in the uh, the project support application was this show um, but this is a really great um, turnout I really am kind of blown away by how big I got I'm, I wouldn't be opposed to like uh, having a few people keep it and we can show it at uh, smaller events around Austin or keep it for um, Brick Rodeo in Sugarland next year, um, kind of up in the air right now. But this is the only event we really had planned for it. Um, but I would like to see it in the future at some point. And also other project support projects. We've got already got plans to do like some steampunk stuff and maybe some farming stuff. I mean, just have to kind of see what comes up.
That's awesome. And for people watching this, maybe they're newer to Lego and just learning about Brick Rodeo and the Lego scene here uh, in the Austin area, where can they find more info about the lug if they want to get involved in the future? Sure. Um, the address for the lug is um, Texlug Austin or austin.texlug.com. Um, there are five lugs in Texas. Uh, if you just type in textlug.com, it'll take you to a landing page that's got Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, Houston Brick Club, and TBRR, which is the railroad group. Um, but yeah, we've got a pretty good group. It's about 35 core people. Um, they're all really interested in building and getting together and doing events like this. So hopefully we get more people to join up and be whimsical about the brick. Yeah. Awesome work. Thank you so much for taking us through the whole layout here. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.